Doctor, look. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Doctor Homebrew. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dr. Homebrew podcast here on the Brewing Network. We are broadcasting, podcasting, recording live from HomebrewCon in Providence, Rhode Island. And we're happy to be here back on the East Coast, which was my original home. I've been a, I've been a California boy for a while now, but I was born in Connecticut, uh, which says a lot about me, really. <laughs> Connecticut is an even weirder state than Rhode Island, I think. And we've got uh, the folks today. I'm filling in for JP, who never yeah. leaves his house now that he's a dad. Right, yeah, Brian? Gotta, gotta let him have that, I guess. Well, you you remember what it's like to have I, that new dad smell. I do, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, yesterday here in Providence, I had a, a drink called the Stay at Home Dad at this coffee slash. Uh, uh, mixed train, you know, they they did spirits and stuff, coffee and spirits. I think it's called New Harvest, and they had a. I like this name. A, uh, Espresso, steamed milk, bourbon, cinnamon, and brown sugar. It was perfect. Like stay at home. After dad. We, you know, we had a few beers early in the afternoon, and then I had one of those, and it, like perked me back up, but it kind of also kept me going. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. <laughs> I had dad's like in one glass. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a beer a couple weeks ago. I went to the Firestone Invitational Beer Fest, and Green uh, Green Cheek Green Cheek, uh-huh. I think they're called, had a beer called Drinking with Mom. <laughs> and his mom, the brewer's mom, literally comes to the brewery once a week and has a beer with him. And so it was oh, yeah. drinking. He named a beer after her, which I'm sure she was proud of. Um, on today's program, uh, it's a little bit of a different format for us, but we're we're sitting with the folks from uh, Bell's uh, Brewing Company, Bell's Brewery, and um, and also a Bell's General Store, which yeah. I've just learned about. So we've got Dylan, Nick, and and John Mallet uh, from Bell's are are on the program with us. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Thanks for being here. Bell's yeah. out of uh, Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how, John? How long has Bell's been around now? Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, let me make sure I can hear you. <laughs> the one microphone I fuck up is John's. How about that? Probably, that's probably for the better. Is it really? for the better? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did that on purpose. Yeah. The, Dylan told me. He's like, just turn John down. <laughs> How long has Bell's been around? Well, you know, Larry got started, uh, what is it, 83, 1983. And, uh, you know, Bell's originally started as Homebrew Supplies and has been that way ever since. Okay. Uh, and then in 85, he thought, well, you know, the, you know, people are interested in craft beer. Um, I don't want to go to jail. Uh, maybe I should get licensed and, and started brewing beer commercially at that point. So we've been doing homebrew supplies for longer than we've been doing beer, and we've been doing beer for a long time. So I didn't know that. And so Bell's General Store still exists, and, and we Absolutely. can we can buy homebrew kits, homebrew supplies of all kinds. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that you guys didn't go away from that. I mean, Bell's uh, obviously a successful brewery, but you guys never threw in the towel on the homebrew side. No. No. No, yeah, we we're kept still going. doing it. Yeah, I think... Uh, Larry, it's important to Larry that we stay, you know, in the the homebrew market and, you know, stay rooted with the community and, and uh, still support all the homebrew um, activities, events. and Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there, is there a homebrew shop on site? There is. Absolutely. Right at the Accenture Cafe. Okay. Yeah. So we can go there and do it, but we can also shop online. You can. Yeah. Okay. Store.bellsbeer.com. Bells, store at bellsbeer.com. Store.bellsbeer.com. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you do online shipping. We can get the kits. We can get everything you do at the at the actual physical store online. 100%. As well. Yeah. How long have you two been with the store? I've been with the store going on four and a half years now. Okay. Yeah. You were a home brewer uh, before? I wasn't. Home winemaker, cheesemaker, uh-huh. uh sauerkraut you know okay fermentation is my jam but uh, I see. not necessarily the beer yet you know i had to get some inspiration and uh wait you said yet still not beer no, no, or no, now sorry uh when you when started, I started yeah. yes okay. yeah I, I apologize because i'll that. throw you right off this show okay. <laughs> i mean i don't okay. even, i don't brew that often but at least i've brewed <laughs> oh yeah before yeah okay john when's the last time you home brewed uh, yeah, at, like at my house. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't homebrew at my house. Like, never, I have yeah. all the toys at work. Why would I? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, you know. So um, you don't but, have to mess with that. No, but I mean, I love going over to people's house and homebrew with them. You know, sure. <laughs> that's that's good. Then it's fun. Yeah, you don't have to. You know, you burn something on their stove and you still leave. You don't have to clean up. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> this is why I don't have kids. My brother has kids. I get to leave them. I get to. Leave, I go visit. It's a fun time, and then I leave. And they have to deal with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same as homebrewing at a friend's house. 
Yeah, I like the uh, you know breweries that maintain close ties with home brewers and and yeah. encourage their employees to home brew and and you know supply them with ingredients for that kind of thing. It's just like you, you maintain that close tie to the. Uh, you know, in the homebrewing community, as, as you can see out here at HomebrewCon, it's a really tight-knit community. You see the same people here coming back year after year. And, uh, you know, it's like start you know, start right right back where you left off with these buddies and, and sharing beers around. And, and that's the fun part, you know. It's not the, the commercial side. You know, you know, it's just sharing beer and having fun and, and sure. brewing, brewing together. <laughs> When's the last time you brewed, Brian? Like a week I've ago? I've been brewing on my, the, uh, the Pico Z. So, yeah, it's been having some fun on that. I did a... The session IPA about uh, probably a month and a half ago. Okay, then, yeah. And Char, when's the last time you homebrewed? You're you're it, avid. You're you avid. know, I've because I'm getting divorced. I have not brewed for a long time. Uh, kind of like Doc's uh, situation. <laughs> I see. Uh, I thought you were going to say the opposite. I'm brewing all the time because well, <laughs> I'm getting divorced. <laughs> well, I've I it's been about a year, but or, I also have a point. I'm getting divorced because I'm brewing all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a circle. It's yeah. vicious. It, uh, Strangely, the one had nothing to do with the other, but uh, I can see that could happen. Absolutely. No, I'm, I've got a Pico Z just like Brian, and in about two weeks, I'm planning to do an American Pale Ale with probably Idaho 7 and Citra. Okay. Maybe like, a, a, like a modern hop, you know, hop forward, uh, low bodied pale ale. We'll see what happens. I'll sure. bring some to the show when I do it. As you should. You guys can tear it up. As I, you should. I thought you had some stuff planned. That's cool. All right, we have to talk about one of my favorite all-time beers, and 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 a beer I think that is, it's kind of one of everybody's staples, right? If you've if you've if you've been in craft beer or home brewing even for a little while, you know about Bell's Two Hearted. Uh, this beer's been around for a bit. It's an American IPA that I think stands the test of time. Um, how long has the Two Hearted recipe and beer been around, John? So I came to Bell's in two thousand and one. Okay, and we were brewing Two Hearted then. Got it was it. a seasonal, small scale, and over the years it's grown. Okay, um, that you know that recipe goes back prior to me being there, you know, and it's just delightful. You know, the single, single hop beer, like consistently rated. I don't know if anybody cares about like the beer rating sites, but <laughs> consistently rated one of the best beers on the planet, which is something to be proud of. I think. When did you guys start canning? We started canning in 2014, so we've been doing this our fifth year on that can line. Okay, got it. And I know, I, I like beer in bottles. I like beer in cans too. I mean, <laughs> so I the the 21st Amendment out in San Francisco was one of the f- first breweries that I knew of that started canning, and they were they did it on like a, a a tiny like forehead filler. And honestly, at the time, I thought they were ridiculous. I thought they were crazy for doing that. I didn't. I, I couldn't see far enough ahead. Um, now, when you go to a liquor store, almost all the doors are full of cans. You almost stand out if you're in a bottle, <laughs> whereas before you stood out with a can, right? That has all changed. Yep. Uh, probably for the better, because we can take cans to the beach. We can take them on the boat. Um, I'm yep. going to enjoy my two-hearted here for a second. Well, cans John, are, I have a yeah. question for you. Uh, I love the label. I always have. Yep. I love that trout. What's the significance of the trout? Or so, is that a trout? Because I'm not a fish guy. Yes, it is a trout. So the name, the name Two Hearted, like where that comes from, is it's it's a Hemingway short story about the mighty Two Hearted River, which is a river in the Upper Peninsula, and it the, the short story uh, chronicles this guy who's had a relationship um, where he's always fished the river with his best buddy, and then the two of them went off to World War One and. Now he's coming back to fish it alone. Okay. And so it's a story about sort of remembrance and loss and fishing. You're a, you're a heady fucking That's really brewery cool. over there, John. Uh, <laughs> Larry, Larry Bell, you know, he's, he's a smart guy. You know, yeah, yeah, smart yeah. guy. Um, yeah, but that's where, the, that's where the, the name comes from. Now, did Hemingway actually rat out his favorite river? Probably not. <laughs> okay, but, uh, <laughs> right. It was a metaphor. Of yeah. A yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a great beer. So here on Dr. Homebrew, uh, we are starting a new program. Uh, so as you know, the, the format of the show is that we have these, these great judges, uh, Brian Cooper and Brian Shar, and occasionally JP. Um, Great's a strong word, uh, Justin. <laughs> you guys are great beer judges who, uh, who help brewers make better beer. So you send in your brew, and these guys kind of evaluate it, not to, not to criticize, but to help elevate and see what people can do a little better. So we're teaming up with uh, Bell's General Store and the, and the kits that you guys do. Okay. So that our listeners can take home some of these beers, brew them, 
send them back in, and yep. then we'll get you all in on the show with these guys to do the same thing and, and evaluate. And what's fun about this is uh, I'm guessing that we're going to get to taste the commercial beer side by side of some of these kits, yeah. right? So your kits that you do are, are based on the Bell's Brewery lineup? They are, yeah. Okay. So Two Hearted um, was the first. Okay. We got that out there because... You had to. You had to. You, everyone right. was going to complain yeah. if you didn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, the recipe's out there. Yeah. Everyone's seen it. Mm-hmm. But how about you use the hops straight from our brewery? Sure. The yeast. I like this. Yeah. Our house ale yeast is uh, packaged by Imperial now. So we okay. offer that up as well. If you're going to be making Too Hearted at home, yeah. make it as close to the actual Too Hearted as Agreed. you can. Yeah. All right. So we got some brewers out here today. Does anybody want to take home a kit and, and, and be, be the first to participate in this? Anybody? Got some home brewers out there? So hang tight because we're going to give away some, but you got to <laughs> yeah. promise to brew it and send it back in. Absolutely. So I, I, I'm glad that you say, that, you know, if you're going to make it, try to make it as close as possible and that you make these kits. Yeah. Okay, but we used to do this show on our network called Can You Brew It? Okay. <laughs> and uh, Jamil Zanishef, who's a pro brewer now at Heretic Brewing Company, and, and our beloved Tasty McDole, who's just a, a great home brewer, they would... They would try to re- they would clone uh, the- these guest beers, and they used to get criticized because what they would do is, that, let's say it was Bell's, for example, they'd mm-hmm. call up John and on the air they would interview him about the beer, exactly how he makes it, all of the recipe, right? Yeah. And they were criticized for doing for cloning it that way because they're like, well, you're cheating if, if John's telling you how to make it all. <laughs> But they failed a whole bunch because it almost uh, you still can't. It's still a challenge to nail to clone a, a beer. Yeah, they There's did Aaron and Bastard issues, like yeah. eight times before. <laughs> and and by the way, I guess that Stone they're not allowed to say if they got it right because they didn't want the recipe out there. Yeah. Uh. I think they got it right like three fucking times, but Greg would never admit that they. But in other words, it still matters what the brewer does in the brew house, right, 100%. John? Like absolutely, I think about you know that process is you know deeply linked with. You know, you've got raw materials, but you've also got, you know, the technique and just the process. Like, what yeah. what controls do you have on stuff? And not all of that is measurable, especially at homebrew scale. So right. there's a lot of art that's there. There is. And so, Brian, what I'm thinking is that when you guys evaluate these beers, it's going to be kind of on two fronts. You're going to, just for fun, you're going to evaluate how close it was to the original Bell's beer. Right. But then on the other side, you're really probably just going to evaluate the quality of the beer like you normally yeah, do. Yeah, you'll, you'll definitely taste a difference if the quality of the brewing is different or they did even just something as diff, you know, simple as the water they used. You know, they you know, didn't get you know, quite where they needed to be. So the sure. recipe is just one thing. You also need to know the minerals in your water. If that you know, if that detail of a recipe is out there, that'd be that'd be cool. You could probably get really close on a homebrew setup, or look there, up yeah. Kalamazoo water, right? Like you yeah. can almost just Google well, what is Kalamazoo's water like. I guess you probably they, treat it after that. Yeah, I imagine they in our kits we actually have a uh, Kalamazoo like a description of the water, oh, okay. the, yeah. the water yeah. profile. It comes okay. in. I think it's in all of the kits now. It should be in all of our kits. It is. You guys are detailed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We had a two hearted uh, clone on the, on one of our recent shows, and uh, they got pretty close. It was, really, it was nice. Remember, Brian? Yeah. And and what's interesting is just like you were saying, you can judge a beer like that two different ways. There's a category in the 2015 guidelines called clone beer, and the goal of that is to reach as much of equality with that commercial beer as you possibly can. Your score is based on how close you got to the commercial example. Okay. Now, if you had a two-hearted ale kit and you entered that as an IPA and it was the most perfect IPA, you could still get a 50. I see. Although it wouldn't necessarily be identical to the two-hearted that is commercially sold. Does that make sense? It does. So it might not score or or place because it wasn't the clone, even if it's a 50-point beer. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't know that that was a category. That's pretty cool. That was new in 2015. Mm -hmm. I see. Not a lot of people do it, and it's a hard category to enter, just as a brief aside, because the judges have to know the beer you're cloning. Sure. So it's really got to be something that every judge is going to be familiar with. You know, and in I, the judging, do, do they not bring in the commercial beer so a judge can do it? In other words, it's by memory? Pretty much. It's a weird category, yeah. and you rarely see people enter it because it is hard to score well in. Sure. But you're going to have to do something iconic like a two-hearted 
for judges to have had the experience of, oh, I've had that beer. Sure. I mean, if I go, as much as I might like a beer at my brew pub down the street, if I go clone that, no one's going to know what that is. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, there's certain beers, too, that are just kind of interesting one-off beers that don't necessarily fit tightly into any one style or another. I mean, you look at Orval or different beers like that. It's just like, yeah, hey, I did an Orval clone. Maybe it's a good place to put something like that if you nail it. But otherwise, yeah. I would not uh, put it in Orval clone. That's a good example of one that's <laughs> like, oh, man. Challenge. Yeah. But, I mean, I think even something like Orval, uh, I'm fascinated by this beer because it is, you know, they make one wort stream, and they ferment it one way, and they package it one way. Yeah. And then it becomes multiple beers. Yeah. You go to the you know you go to the little cafe right down from Orval and you can get aged Orval or fresh Orval. Yeah, and those are two different beers. Absolutely, that's a good point. And that's you know so like where in that life cycle is it as well? This is this is kind of a cool category. I feel like that's just a lazy person's way of making eight different beers. Is what Orval did. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're lazy. But that's what yeah, those monks, lazy dudes. That's I've always said that. Yeah, yeah. lazy <laughs> or resourceful. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Smart, smart, smart. So where do you think we're going to start with this? Are we are we going to give away Two Hearted as one of our kits? I think we are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then give us uh, examples of some of the other kits, too. What else sure. do you have? Um, Hop Slam. Okay. Nice. That's a good one. Official, which yeah. we do have on the table as well. Okay. What is official? Official is our Hazy IPA. All right. Yeah. Got it. You got to have that. You Everyone has have to have that. Yeah. John, were you on board with that from the get-go? Like, yeah, we should do this, or did you have to? Well, we've been making this beer for... A- quite a while and playing with it and thinking, oh, we're going to do this release and we're talking about it. And then we get pretty far down. It was like, you know, it's, oh, it's a lot of our beers are hazy. You know, like that's just what sure. the, what we've done for a Because you were homebrewers. Because we're homebrewers. I mean, <laughs> you know, Oberon has been unfiltered. And, you know, as long as I've been at the brewery and certainly well before that, okay. fielding questions about, hey, hey, what's up with the murky stuff in the beer? You know, it's like, <laughs> right. it's yeast. It's okay. Right? And now yeah. it's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, cool. yeah, it's so funny. So, I, you know, for a long time I was homebrewing. And when I was early in my homebrewing, I was making hazy beer. Sometimes, you know, I, I wasn't a super, you know, having good luck with some of my transfers. And I'd bring beer into homebrew club meetings or share with friends. And then they break out their perfectly clear beer. You know, this is back in the, the right. 2000s, and it's like, oh, the clear beer was definitely the cooler there. Like, why, Brian, why can't you get your beer clear? And, and now it's like the opposite. Everybody's like, why it is, is your beer hazy? Hazy's and when the I best. started the BN, uh, one of the things I would say is like, oh, you can always tell a homebrew because it's not because it's hazy, because it's not yeah. clear, which was not a compliment. I, I wasn't disparaging it <laughs> no. either, but it was like, yeah, you can tell because pro brewers were looking to make some crystal clear too hearted, right? But now all the cool kids. Yeah, but we've always made, but we've always made, I mean, Two Hearted always has had haze in it. Okay. And yeah. it's just, yeah. I mean, it's just like we want to make the minimally processed, most flavorful, sure. stable, excellent beer we yeah. can. Yeah, right. And it's, it's always been allowed in the style guidelines for regular IPA. You, know, you can have a little hop haze. There's some, there's some real matter in there. You didn't just make this from a syrup and, and, you know, right. it's, it's made from agricultural products here. There's something in there. That's right. What else in the kiss? Any other any other breweries that we can think of, or uh, beers rather that we can think of? Oberon. Oberon. Okay, yeah. that's a oh, that's a good clone. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a nice one to have. Yeah. I love Oberon. That's such a great beer. Yeah, summer. There's I wish Oberon. I could get it in California. My oh, ex wife's yeah. <laughs> family is from Michigan, and oh my god! But it was always the thing we got to Michigan. I would always get Oberon. Yeah, that's a nice beer. So we get we get some bells in California now, though. Nowadays, we get a little distribution out there. Yeah, Southern Cal, yeah. Yep. And we have a, we've got a bar, one of our hot grenade bars in Fort Collins, Colorado, so we get some bells there. Uh, that's a good place to have it. All right. All right. Well, I am excited about this partnership, so we're going to take a break, and at the break, we're going to give away some of these kits uh, so that our homebrewers can go and brew it, and then we'll give you a little time. We're going to give you listeners, you know, six weeks or so, and then we'll bring the Bells guys back, and we're going we're gonna to evaluate the beer on air. And, and like I said, in kind of two ways, you're going to get to you're going to get to play with this category that you said in, in BJCP. We'll do it two ways. Did did they get the the clone that it's trying to be? But then also just the quality of the beer, right? Sounds great. Okay, awesome. that'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be a good time. All right, boys. Well, thank you for being on the program. Where can people go buy the kits again? Store.bellsbeer.com. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and you can you can Google Bell's General Store, and I'm Definitely sure it's going to come up. Uh, or just Bell's and follow the links. And it's probably going to yeah. Gonna there, it's it's yeah. probably right at the top of the search. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are probably it. okay at yeah. SEO by now. All right, so do that. Uh, we're going to have a couple beers here at the break, and when we come back, we're going to get back to our normal format. And, normal uh, format. Uh, do, you've picked out a, a home brewer here to try their beer? Yeah, it's it's one of my, my fellow Mad Zymergist members. Okay. His name is Jeff. All right. He, he was on last year's NHC uh, episodes. Is he that was, right? 
Yeah. And, and um, what beer are we evaluating? He has prepared for us a, uh, a porter with spruce tips. Okay. So, do I get to judge too or taste it? Yeah, of course you get to taste it. It's a terrible idea to have me do this. I'm not very good at it. Did you guys already evaluate might, the beer and score like it and everything it. Yeah. else? Oh, yeah. We sure did. All right, hang in there. It's Dr. Homebrew live from Providence, Rhode Island. We are at Homebrew Con, and we'll be right back with some homebrew. Welcome back to Dr. Homebrew. We are live from Providence, Rhode Island. Bunch live of, is, yeah. A bunch of fucking amateurs, Bevo. I don't know. Oh, I work with these people. Probably because they're great brewers. I wouldn't have hired us either, you know. <laughs> it's we, the high pay that I'm here that's for. That's what it actually. is, isn't it? Uh-huh. We're having a lot of fun out here. We're live at the at HomebrewCon in Providence, Rhode Island. We just had the pleasure of uh, interviewing the folks from Bell's. I uh, got to talk to John Mallett over there, who's just a, a great brewer. Uh, so that was fun. And now we're back to our standard uh, Dr. Homebrew format. Uh, I'm filling in for JP uh, on, on a couple of episodes here because he's a, he's a new dad and, and he's got to stay home with, with his... And by new, I think his kid's like one or two by now. One, one, <laughs> yeah, so, one and some change. Yeah, but he's still, he's hanging out at home, so, so I'm helping out. Um, Brian, why don't you tell us uh, what beer we have and who made it and what we're doing now? All right. We got a, uh, we're, it's a Spicer vegetable beer, so... Uh, this is a porter. We're calling it an American porter with uh, Sitka spruce tips. And there was a hint. Uh, there was a, a rumor that maybe there was a little smoke in it or uh, uh, something. But we were, we, were, we were deciding whether to declare that or not. So the entrant left that up to our, uh, our judgment. So the Your entrant is, yeah. is this guy here, Jeff. Hi Jeff, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fondle your face right. for a second. You good? There you go. All right. Yeah. Now we're happy. Tell us about the beer, Jeff. Yeah. So it's a um, it's a spruce tip porter. Um, I got the uh, spruce tips from Alaskan Brewing. Actually, um, they do a competition every year. They're doing another one coming up soon. Uh, and so a couple of years ago, I had ordered it online. They sent some out. Um, you can go there today, I think, and order their stuff. Seven bucks. They'll ship it anywhere. You get three ounces of their Sitka spruce tips. Okay. Um, that they forage or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> However, wander they get. through the fields and, and pick. Uh, so yeah, I had them laying around, and I wanted to do something with them, but I didn't want to do an IPA. I wanted to do something different, so I had some other stuff laying around. I figured, hey, I'll make a uh, make a porter and figure okay. it out. All right. First time ever doing spruce, so I wanted to see what these guys thought, and yeah. then uh, yeah, if there's any, we'll we'll see what they say, and if we want to make some modifications to it, maybe I'll enter it up in the competition up in Alaska. And yeah. I'm going to assume that the spruce is is on top of your normal ingredients. So there are hops in the beer. It's not Correct. like substituted for. Yeah, no, it's it's a normal. It's basically a normal base um, porter. Okay, um, and then put spruce tips in the last fifteen minutes. Got it. How long yeah. have you been brewing, Jeff? I've been brewing for twenty something years at wow. this point. Yeah, he's just a before 20, it was 20 before something. it was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before it was cool. Ninety. I started in ninety six. So you've been brewing since you were twelve, basically. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was been the only way I could get booze at the house. You know? Sure, just make your own. You so. had to do what you had to do. Got, what are you going to do? <laughs> What's little uh, Jeffy doing down there? <laughs> you know, when you're in seventh grade, you do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm fermenting Kool Aid early. You know, mm. I mean, that was that was the thing. Okay, hooch. <laughs> and do you enter a lot of competitions with your beers? I I don't. Okay, I'm lazy. Are are you a BJCP judge as well? I am, yeah. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a national judge. I just took the written test again to hopefully move to master, so we'll see. Okay. All of us here yeah, judged in the national competition this morning. We did this that morning? Too. Yeah. How did that go? Hungover, oh, it was yeah. fun. It was, was it? It's good. It was very, know? very hungover. It's, so it'll a, be it's great a joy to judge that, and uh, especially to do many uh, mini best of shows of that one and pick pick the medal winners. The yeah. best of the best wow. in the entire country. Or if I'm, you're brilliant I'm like honored. me and pick sour beers to start your day with. <laughs> uh, so this is John's, John's with us today. Is that Was that your first category it today? It was. I actually did select it on purpose. I I would, sour. He, I'm thinking about my morning and how I felt. I would have not liked that. I took a Zantac before I. Okay, judged. smart, <laughs> very, very smart. Brian, are you, what, what did you judge today? Uh, well, in the morning I did some uh, English and Irish uh, uh, stouts, and then in the afternoon I got to do um, some um, fruit meads and okay. um, saisons. So nice. Those were the, the best of show ones. The last two. So and Brian Shar, you judged as well. Yes, I did. I did uh, uh, brown British uh, ales in the morning, uh, eight a.m. 
after arriving at Hartford at midnight and getting to the hotel at 2.30. Yeah, that's a, that's a good good morning. Yeah. Um, and then did many best to show, not with Brian, but in the same uh, uh, room as Brian, okay. with uh, British and Irish styles also. So it was a lot of fun. It's always super fun. One of the best things to me about Homebrew Con is coming to be able to judge the final round. Sure. You get mm-hmm. really great beers from all over the country, and it's just fun to see what people have brewed. I don't go to talks anymore. I just I'm so busy judging and recording shows and, and hitting the hot tub and you know <laughs> going to arcades down the street. That's like, but you I, know everything, Brian. You don't no, have to go to talks yeah. anymore. You know all the things. Uh, I know some of the things. Yeah. What are these talks you're referring to? Uh, yeah, the, right. the seminars, I guess they're the called. seminars. It yeah. almost blows my mind how often we come here and we go to no seminars. We just go to breweries. <laughs> yeah. We pay to go to breweries. It's so funny, yeah, uh, because you could just come to this town at, a, at any other time. But I'm the same. Uh, yeah, I basically do the shows during the day and go to breweries at night, and that's my conference. Yeah. Uh, well, if you've never been to a conference uh, next year, it's in Nashville, Tennessee. I think that's a great reason to yeah, go. Yeah. And you should you should come on out because there's just a bunch of great seminars. You can learn a lot. And as Brian was mentioning, even in the first segment, you get to hang out with brewers, which is a good time. Very is that very official, good Justin? Brewer. That Nashville is next year? I, I think so. It is. Uh, look nice. at the in, look at the inside of your name tag right there. Uh, it, but there's a fold. Oh. And check it out inside. It's, there's a little uh, secret. Uh, see, right. John, help him out. He's a lawyer. Oh, he yeah, can, Nashville, Tennessee. He nice. does two He's things. He can child. brew beer and he can lawyer. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm pretty freaking helpless. <laughs> so, yeah, it's official. Can someone wipe my butt later? <laughs> I'm inside sorry. Of the to me, Nashville, Tennessee, by the way, is kind of like having the conference in Vegas. Like, we're all going to get in trouble. It's just such yeah. a fun town. But come on out to Homebrew Con next year if you've never been. It's, it's a good time. So, Brian, how do, how do you want to start here? Who do you want to have evaluate this beer with us first? Um, well, let's pour the beer and taste it together. Uh, okay. I think that, um, you know, I'll, I'll start off once we get this poured here. Uh, I can start off uh, chatting about the beer, and then we'll... Um, ask Jeff about his recipe, and we're pouring it now. Have you, out have you of never a, listened to our show? Do you know? <laughs> are you kidding? Absolutely, I've never listened to your show. Not even Jeff, <laughs> how's your bottle fill in this thing? It's, Thank you. I your, thought it was a little insulated leaky. container. Yes, yes, yeah. It's a, a white growlet from a Altamont growlet. Beer Works. <clears throat> Double walled and insulated I love container. We're pouring thing. it in our glass. Nice glasses this year, by the way, at HomebrewCon. They are very sweet. Definitely. Uh, that, that is, yeah. They got a little bell to them. Um, you know, the uh, opening at the, it goes wider at the top. It to, is, yeah. To, like our sponsor. It's like, like a better mini, for uh, the aroma. Like yeah. Tulip yeah that's what I was trying to say. A little exactly. more opening. All right. So we're all, all right. tasting this now, Brian. What do you think? Yeah, Jeff just poured this for us. Uh, in the nose, it's uh, a nice medium malty. And this is uh, warmed up a little bit since we tasted it earlier. I think it's opening up a little bit. There's some light chocolate, faint coffee behind that. Uh, hops are, are low and out of the way, just a little earthiness in there. Um, the um, you know medium low esters. It's a, it seems like a pretty clean fermentation character. Um, the spruce character to me at first came out kind of low, but we were drinking it pretty cold earlier, and I think I was also just thinking of. The way that spruce plays off of uh, IPAs is like that. That's mostly, you know, like Jeff said, what everybody does with the spruce. And I think it's creative. Maybe the inspiration here could have been something to do with the Alaskan, you know, porter that they make the smoked porter, and then a different twist on on that kind of. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the recipe and where it, where it came from a little later. So uh, you know, it but it came out a little more later, I think, and it was uh, just a very clean beer, no DMS, no diacetyl. Um, it's it's a good solid brown color, but if you look at it, you can see right through it. It's a nice, uh, very clear beer, and um, the head started low. Ended up with a kind of a collar of uh, finer and some larger bubbles in there. It's a light tan colored head, uh, but it's you know it's, it's it lasted a fair while. And uh, in the flavor, I'm getting uh, pleasant chocolatey and, and coffee malt notes again. Uh, uh, low earthiness from the hops. There, there's that 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 spruce is, was eluding me earlier, and mm. it's it's really coming out now as it's warmed up. Um, the uh, has a hint of bitterness uh, from that uh, from the malt, the roasted malts in there. I would say, um, or the chocolate malts, whatever you've got in there. Medium low fruitiness. Uh, it's, it's definitely uh, balance wise, it's leaning towards the malt. Uh, the, the finish is interesting on this one because it does finish with. I would say just a hint of sweetness. It doesn't. It isn't like drying off the tongue too much. And with 
with a porter like this, I would definitely, I like a little, I don't want it to be bone dry, so it's just like, ah, and it just goes away, and dries off your tongue, and is gone. If you have that chocolate alongside a little bit of sweetness in the finish, it's nice. And I think that the, you know, the, the beer seems like it attenuated well. It's at a good place um, in that regard, so. I think that's a great point, Brian, that people, I, I love a well-attenuated beer, but there's a difference between well-attenuated and being so bone dry that it falls off your palate instantly and you lose the flavor. Yeah. And I think along with that, too, as it does slowly dry off, the, 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 the spruce tips come out in that final swallow. It's, they're, they're coming through pleasantly in the aftertaste. Um, and, again, no obvious flaws in the flavor. I'm just It's a nicely clean beer. The, the spruce is kind of piney, herbal-like, almost kind of almost sweet and, and, and fresh tasting to me, like a fresh plant kind of quality. So, yeah, interesting. The, the spruce, the funny thing, because you, you didn't get it as much as Brian and I got it, but this always reminds me of when you walk out of your car after driving up to Tahoe and you smell those ponderosa pines, mm. that just that yeah. beautiful green spicy resiny aroma and that's what i was getting right off the bat with with jeff's beer and it carries through pretty well i love it. it's just a layered flavor yeah right on top yeah. of that beautiful porter well, a, lot of, a lot of times too i get spruce beers that are just over spruce and it's just insane i was like i can't it's like licking a tree i can't handle this right now the balance on this is really nice between the the base style and the spruce, and it's actually an interesting combination. It's something I wouldn't have think thought to do, but it works. I wouldn't so, think thought to do it either. Think thought, think thought. Uh, so overall, it's you know, good, clean beer. Uh, good attention to the American Porter style. Uh, seems like pretty good. Fresh ingredients were used here. Um, I could deal with even a little more spruce tip character. I know, I know you guys wow. are saying it's it's heavier. I think I think you could go even a little higher, and it wouldn't seem over the top. Just like having to uh, compete against the chocolatey flavors of the malt, it's uh, you know it's going to stand out better. It's just a tiny touch higher, mm-hmm. but um, I, I would not declare any them. smoke in the spear. I think there is some smoked malt in there. Um, it comes. Uh, it expresses itself as kind of a light little roastiness and a little kind of not smoky necessarily or ashy, but just. The roasty malt quality, it just kind of <laughs> plays off the edges of the malt, and it's kind of there, but it's not really smoke-like. So I wouldn't say smoke on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, spruce is a different uh, different kind of animal with the porter than, than the spruce tip IPAs, but I'm, I'm glad you did it, Jeff. I gave it a 38, and I, I enjoyed this beer a lot. Is you, you said there is some smoke in there. Is there peat malt in there, Jeff, no. or something like that? It's not peat. No, it's actually it's what's alder smoke. Okay. And that actually it's from Alaskan Brewing, too. So Got it. Um, they had sent a half a pound out or something, and I was like, well, i got nothing else to do with this, so I'll just throw it in here. Sure. So you're, you you might hate me for this. Uh, there are, to me, both smoke malt can, uh, can sometimes express itself as an off flavor to me, mm-hmm. and the same with something like spruce tips. Like mm. they're on like the verge of like a of a medicinal right. character, phenolic notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I'm not saying they are off flavored. I'm saying that's how my, I my first impression and yours as well. When I first tasted, I'm like, oh, there's something strange about that. But I do think that Brian's right that the the, the spruce ends up expressing itself differently as it falls off the palate, as the beer warms up a little bit, and and as I have a couple tastes, I realize okay, it's not an off flavor, it's not a medicinal. I'm actually picking up on this herbal spruce right. character. Yeah, yep. you can mistake it for a, a phenolic or or even some something weird in a hop or something. Yeah. I should say, too, as people are passing by with empty glasses, feel free if to you come want to try. grab yep, the yeah. beer in this white growler and taste beer. it with us because we're talking about this beer. This it's is a spruce tip beer. porter, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. If you want and to Justin, your point porter. is well taken because phenolic, the descriptor is smoky, right? So oh, okay. The, there's a fine line between smoky good and smoky bad sometimes. Okay. Right? So when you smoke malt, and you put smoked malt into a beer, you want that smoked character, and that is phenolic. Okay. But that's intentional. That's not like you right. made like an American light lager, and suddenly it tastes like it's the same phenolic. kind of smoke. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that, it's an excellent point that there are some, uh, some quote, off flavors that are off flavors for some styles, yeah. but that are desired and expected flavors in other styles. 
And I guess, so I'm glad that you're pointing that out too, that it is part of the descriptor, because I guess what I'm also trying to say is that I have to slow myself down sometimes and remind myself that I might not know what I'm tasting. In other words, I, I think it's very, as a beer nerd especially, it's very quick for us to go, well, this is happening in that beer. And that, yeah. and sometimes that's that's actually not what's happening in that beer. I have that's to right. remind right. myself that I don't know everything, and I should slow down a little bit. And and maybe it's something else happening in the beer than I than I think. Right. Yeah. And and so if you hadn't <laughs> described this beer to me, for example, um, the first thing I might have said was, "Well, there's some off flavor this in there." This is crap. Yeah. And then later you would have said, "Well, actually, there's a bit of smoke and there's a bit of spruce," and then I would have been wrong. Does that make sense? Like, no, I have to slow down a little bit. You would have been right. I mean, so the, you know, the phenolic piece is a large class of aromatics, right? So and it ranges from smoke to that medicinal to... Um, plastic. Yeah, you know, plastic. White 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 all, there's, like, all kinds of stuff in there. Okay. So what, what you're tasting is what you're tasting. So I don't, see. don't yeah. discount that piece of it. Sure. But, but you're right. Like, it had... I think I would do myself a disservice if I just called this a porter. Like, yeah, you, would, yeah. you would go, mm, there's something Bad wrong with this. Yeah, that's a not great a good point, porter. Jeff, because <laughs> if this was just a porter and you hadn't added smoke or spruce, those would be off flavors. For sure. You added the smoked malt and the spruce, so they're not off flavors. That's an intentional part of what you did. Okay. Well, why don't you give us your evaluation, Brian? Cool. Thanks. So I really like this beer a lot. Uh, the aroma, uh, you know, medium malt, uh, medium soft floral hops. Um, as it war- Initially, I didn't get the spruce so much in the aroma. As it warms up, I get some... Not a lot. I definitely get the smoked, uh, you said alderwood, uh, yep. Jeff? Definitely get the smoked alderwood in the aroma. Gave this 8 out of, out of 12 for the uh, the aroma. Appearance, 3 out of 3. I mean, this is a classic porter. It's uh, You hold this up to the high bays in particular. You can really have that intense light. This is very clear. Uh, it's a dark brown, uh, uh, dark brown color. Uh, great head. You know, it's kind of a medium small head, but it lasts a long time. It's great. Three out of three. Mm-hmm. Uh, flavor, malt, low roast, get a light smoke character. Uh, get the floral hop flavor that is in the aroma as well. Uh, kind of medium low bitterness where, where you want it to be for this style. Fermentation is really clean. I don't really get any off, off fermentation characters. Uh, balance is right between hoppy and malty and it's really well attenuated. I think the spruce, the spruce is, this is such a great spruce flavor, Jeff. I, I've had spruce beer, and I hate spruce beer because it's like <laughs> pine salt. Yeah, I, I, right. I, I, I can't recall the last time I've had a spruce beer that wasn't like drinking a pine salt, yeah. like going to that creepy adult bookstore by your old house. And <laughs> they, you, walk, you, walk, well, you always talked no, about that right, on, on right. the session. Yeah. I've never been there. I'm just saying. I'm just in theory. <laughs> Let's say one goes to the porn theater and what might smell like the pine salt. How, sure. we, how did we get there? Yeah, of, right? Because of pine salt. It because like of spruce. Pool cleaning you know, supplies. We're just, exactly. Pool cleaning supplies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. This the spruce is so deftly handled here. Yeah. This is exactly for me. This is the right amount. It is any any less you wouldn't taste it any more. It would be pine saw. Mm. So this is a really you you walk that line really really well with this beer. So I gave this a fourteen out of out of twenty for flavor. Uh, Mouthfeel five out of five. You know, body's medium. Carbonation's medium. No warming. It's creamy, not astringent. Really a, a great mouthfeel on this. Uh, I really like this beer. Uh, so the spruce is not overwhelming. A little more in the aroma. It's the only thing I could think of to make this beer better. A little more spruce in the aroma might be a good thing. But I don't know how to do that without making it more pine saw. Mm. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I would rather live with... This is, this is the hard thing about judging sometimes. In, in the platonic ideal of a spruce beer, you might want to have more spruce aroma and have the same spruce flavor. I don't know how you get from there to here, mm-hmm. yeah. from here to there. I think if you tried to make more aroma, you're going to drive the flavor more pine saw, and you're going to lose more points on flavor than you're going to gain on aroma. And maybe there's we, we, ch- we chatted offline before the show about you know dry sprucing and things like that and why that's not going to work yep. and talked about some potential uh, strategies for that, but it's it, it's one of those difficult things and this is where you know listeners you can maybe take something away from this. There's there are some 
Diminishing some, returns. Diminishing returns. There are some, it's like squeezing a balloon, right? Yeah. There are some things you might squeeze the balloon here to improve it, but it's going to get bigger. You, know, you squeeze that animal, that dog-shaped balloon, and, right. you know, but then the, the head explodes or something. Uh, and it's really difficult. And Jeff's laughing well, here for people that can't use uh, this bizarre and, analogy that I've, <laughs> I've made. But there, well, there are times really. Well, I, I'm a bizarre human. Well, I appreciate that you recognize that about me, Jess, that I'm a strange man. And well, let's do this. I, I want to. I, I don't. And I don't know the format of the show. But what I'm going to do with this show is after uh, John tells us his sort of evaluation <laughs> too. I want to come back and talk about your techniques about how yeah. you spruced it, okay. uh, so th- so that our listeners can learn that as well. Yeah. Yeah. What was your final score, Brian? Uh, 38. Uh, also at 38. This was a really yeah. good beer. Yeah. And our, our friend John judged it with us as well. Another yeah. 38. Another 38. We all, well, we all agreed. It was, it, was, it, was, it was unanimous. Surprisingly and, any, close. Anything to add in your evaluation from what we've talked yeah, about? Yeah, a couple of things. I, I think I probably got the most joy out of the spruce. Okay. You know, like my earlier comment about the, the just that joy of the Ponderosa pine smell when you're up in Tahoe. Yeah. Same thing. Um, but I think... Probably what makes this spruce better in this beer is where he got the spruce tips. Okay. I mean, think about it. It's an ingredient just like our hops, our malt, all this stuff. I, sure, I could go pick a spruce tips off of a, a spruce tree around here. Is it going to taste exactly the same as one from the you know beautiful clean air out in Alaska? Probably not. So I think that yeah. may have contributed to this being so well balanced and mm-hmm. really well flavored as a spruce beer. And I get tons of aroma. I probably gave it a higher aroma score than both of you. I give it a 10. Yeah, I was at 9. I give it an 8, yeah. So, you know, and that's probably the biggest difference there. Um, Just a couple, I'll toss a couple other things out there. Uh, One of the nice things about a porter, especially an American porter, is you get this light burnt caramel or toffee character. Mm -hmm. He has it in there. I wanted a little bit more to bring kind of everything together. That was probably my only uh, negative on it. Okay. But I love the just the green, resiny, sprucey goodness in it. And, you know, solid beer. Yeah. And, you know, as you're getting to the questions to Jeff about the technique and so forth, I think that's where I'm curious about. Because you've got to do a lot more balancing in this type of beer. Because it's not just... What hops am I going to use? Are you backing off of the hops now because you're putting in spruce tips, which sure. have a bitter yeah. resiny character? Are you changing your malt profile a little bit to balance that out? And I think we're going to learn a lot when we hear about yeah. that. And that's part of why I asked that question as well. Uh, so locally up in Northern California, we have Moonlight Brewing Company who makes a beer called Working for Tips. And he did take out the hops and instead put in spruce is my understanding. Uh, Brian, I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that. The other Brian. Brian Hunt is his name. <laughs> the third Brian. The yeah. third Brian. Brian yeah, Hunt. More Brian's. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what he did. And so that's because it can be used as an ingredient like that to, to balance the sweetness of malt. Uh, yeah. But you, you, you also used hops. So. I did. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. And formerly, I mean, there were no hops in beer. And the, it, you had Gruet. Yeah. And they used things like tree stuff and plants and herbs that they found that would kind of preserve the beer a little bit and give it sure. some bitterness to balance. Shadow the, Puppet is also doing a uh, beer oh, yeah. called Needle Tip. And oh, honey, okay. and whatever and else I think put it's in there. a regular beer now. <laughs> right. If I were to do a beer like that, I would call it Tree Stuff, actually. Tree Brian. Stuff. I think that's <laughs> a good, uh, <laughs> good And by the way, we're hiring you for the show. Your, your format is great. <laughs> you, actually, no, you've just kind of intuitively figured out what we do. Yeah, tree we, Stuff. We okay, go through yeah. our sheets and then we talk to the brewer about his recipe. So let's do that then. We'll take a really quick break and when we come back uh, we'll talk to Jeff more about how he brewed this beer and how maybe we can get the most out of our spruce tip beer. You're listening to the new version of Dr. Homebrew. I'm just kidding. It's it's an intermediate version of Dr. Homebrew. I'm Justin Crossley filling in for JP. Hang in there and we'll be right back. Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The Internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew. 
a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. The leader in affordable, high-quality kegerators is here. Introducing Comos, the kegerator designed with serious beer drinkers in mind. It features an all-stainless steel draft tower, a major upgrade over traditional chrome-plated brass towers, and Comos keeps your new tower cold with their air-cooled tower fan, wrapping your beer lines in frigid coolness. Your beer is poured from innovative forward-sealing faucets that don't leak, so they stay cleaner for longer. Dual gas inlets on the rear of the fridge allow you to run both CO2 and nitrogen gas. Serve your beer with CO2, serve your kegged wine, or even cocktails with nitrogen. The digital temperature display has the largest range available, allowing you to use the Comos Kegerator for fermentation if you need to. And now Comos Kegerators ship with duo-tight draft fittings for that click-to-connect assembly we've all dreamed of. Buy direct from ComosDraft.com and receive free shipping on your order. That's K-O-M-O-S Draft.com. Welcome back to Dr. Homebrew. We are podcasting, broadcasting, recording live from HomebrewCon in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, it's exciting to be here. We're seeing a lot of brewers out there. Uh, a lot of our friends are, are wandering around. And, and if you want to try the beer and you're walking by, we've got a little bit uh, left right here. It's a, it's a porter with spruce tips. Um, and we're going to learn more about that beer from Jeff right now. Uh, in the meantime, though, I want to thank uh, uh, just a longtime uh, supporter of this show. And I, I can't thank them enough for doing all that they do. And that's Five Star Chemicals. Uh, and you, you can't brew great beer unless you, you, you clean and sanitize and do all of the things that great brewers do. And Five Star is our go-to source for exactly that. Yeah. Uh, and, in fact, if you've ever had really high-scoring beers on this program, I would thank Five Star. I would thank cleaning. I would thank sanitation, right? I you, drink a glass of uh, Star Sand every morning. <laughs> yes, you should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keeps you healthy. keeps you young. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I want to thank them for supporting this program and the Brewing Network. Work. They've been with us for years, and they're just they're, they're wonderful people who make the things that allow you guys to make wonderful beer. What's really funny, yeah. Justin, is this morning, not, this is not because this is a sponsor spot, but this is a legitimate conversation we had this morning, <laughs> judging, is there's different flaws that have happened in homebrew over the years and different things you deal with. And when Star Sand came on the market, all the... The weird bleachy iodiney stuff yeah. went away. Yeah. A lot of the infected stuff went away. And yeah. it was really a revolution as far as I had the number of 17s you gave in competition pre and post Star Sand. Oh, interesting. Went from like maybe two or three in a comp to maybe one or zero. Well, and we've been talking uh, that about was phenolic. Some, that was all Star Sand. And some of these, yeah, some of that could, could have come from yeah. those cleaners before. When did that Absolutely. Come on the market? That was probably early 2000s, if I had to guess. Maybe. Well, we started in 05, so it was certainly before us. And by the way... Well, when it finally if, kind of hit the market big, with, I'm guessing, and I, 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 I'm forgive not sure. me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking it had to be, what, maybe 2004, sounds, 2005? Sounds okay. legit. Well, they're right down the way. We could ask them. Go say hi to them. Yeah, go say hi to them. And I do, if you're a new listener to the Brewing Network, go back in the archives, search Five Star on our website. And, and back in the day, we did an interview with uh, Charlie Talley, I think is his last name. But yes, he was one that of the sounds Charlie right. Talley. And you know what? It's one of the best shows we've ever done. Yes. Charlie came on and talked about, he, get, he there was a lot of misnomers about uh, Star Set, how it could be used, how it's safe to use. And he cleared up a what lot about of that. the foam? Uh, yeah, go back and listen to that show. <laughs> and thanks. Thanks to Five Star for supporting us. Yes. Uh, okay. So, Jeff, uh, spotlight's on you, my friend. Uh, tell us, uh, I mean, I guess what we mostly want to know is how you use the spruce tips. The spruce and tips, yeah. The form and, and how you, you mentioned a little bit how you got them, but go through this with us. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the, the grain bill is a basic, you know, porter grain bill, although I did use um, about a half pound of smoked malt from Alaskan, which was that alder smoke. Um, the rest of it is, you know, Munich malts and uh, and chocolate malt, black patent. Um, but the, the you know hop bill is sort of a normal hop bill, so it's um, you know two ounces of Centennial at sixty minutes, and then um, another ounce at fifteen, um, and then I used Eureka at knockout. But but I put in three and three quarter ounces of these spruce tips. Um, 
Not that much. At 15. Okay. Yeah. I, it, it was, I, I had no idea really, you know, how much to put in, but so I, I what, put in all I had. What's the format gallons? of these? Are they, like, chopped up little bits? Or are they long? Yeah, they, I mean, they look like whole cones. I mean, they're just, like, chopped. They were, I had thrown mine in the freezer, um, and so I just would last 15 minutes, throw them in with, with my whirl flock, and, uh, okay. and let it go. It smelled really nice at that point. I bet. Um, well, but all those volatiles are burning off right then, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And they say, you know, we were talking about dry sprucing, and I guess that's not a thing because <laughs> it of the is oils. Um, well, <laughs> but I don't know that you can actually do it. I think because of the oils are such that it won't, it doesn't quite work like hops do. So. You mean it wouldn't, the, 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 the flavors wouldn't leach off of the spruce? Yeah. You need the heat. I, that's from what I understand, yeah. Okay. You, you got you to boil it. Okay. You got to boil it to get the aromatics out of it. Got it. So it's sort of like a summarization for hops, but you know, in order to get the volatiles out, you you can't just let it sit there. I see. Yeah. So fifteen minutes of boil is what you did. Fifteen minutes of boil. Just how to, did you come to that? Uh, the 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 measurement of how much was that? Just a random. You're, I'm going to try. Would you say three quarter? Uh, three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Almost sorry. four ounces. Yeah. Okay. That was what I had. <laughs> I see. It's what I had. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Which is almost everything else in the grain bill too is kind of what I had. I'm realizing that I think. At HomebrewCon last year, I got a bunch of samples of things, and I think I threw them all on this. Okay. Like, I think that's what this was. <laughs> Combine them well. Yeah. Well, it's the junk here. We'll so if Brian Shar is mentioning uh, that you guys sort of talked off air about how you might get more of the aromatics, but not enough to, to for it to turn into an off flavor or something, what what did you discuss? What, what were you guys talking about to how to figure that out? Um, well, we had talked about the dry hop, the dry okay, the dry hop thing, which you think might not really work, which, okay. which we understand doesn't really work. So I, I don't know. Like I, it was sort of across the board. Like you know, I think John tasted a lot. I get a lot of spruce. Um, you know, Brian was like, I don't really taste the spruce. So I, right. I'm, not, I'm not quite well, sure. I wasn't what to getting do with it as it. much in the nose, and uh, as it warmed up, I got more, a little more in the nose. But it, it was there in the flavor. Of just yeah, yeah. I think it had to warm up. So now that it's warmed yeah. up, now you're like, oh, I smell spruce. I think what sure. you need to do, Jeff, is um, get one of those trees that you hang in, the, in your mirror and just mm. like don't uh, put it in the beer, but like just hang it inside it there the and waft. Like a- okay, so I know that you're joking, but I w- this is kind of what I was thinking about. Could you, since you're thinking that you need heat, could you potentially boil them separately oh, and have this in. kind of water tincture that you and and then you could sort of. Uh, you know, if you wanted more, you'd add another fucking drop. Like, you can yeah. sort of do it separately. That's fair. This, this is my first foray into the spruce tip world, so sure. I don't even... Well, get I didn't even do any You're damn so lazy research. already, I'll I bet know. they've well, got the, vials of that at, at a holistic store. It's probably right? already but, done, right? Yeah. The problem yeah. with the tinctures is, is that going to increase the flavor more than the aroma yeah. or as much as the aroma. The you flavor just got to try it, Brian. Right. And is there something... And I'm not familiar enough with brewing with spruce tips... You know, what if you added more, you know, 20, 25% more at flame out? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like hops where there's an there's aroma addition sure. at the very end with spruce. I just, I don't know if the, the kinetics of that reaction yeah. are such that that's where you get aroma or you just get like... Because it just barfs up or uh, uh, and the, the experience is flavor just not there. and aroma. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. This is why Jeff's new book at Brewing with Spruce Tips is coming out exactly. right. <laughs> next year. You coming can find out it soon. on the Brewers Network. Association yeah, twenty twenty one. Brewing June. with Spruce Tips. Exactly. It's a half a page long. The whole book. <laughs> is, uh, it's a pamphlet. More. It's a Kanye yeah, West yeah. book. There's That'll like be twelve dollars, and he'll and sign then. it for you up at the uh, the area in the front. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I might try to push it back and just drop it to knockout and see my next one and see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, you certainly, um, we're, we're picking it apart because that's what you do here on the show, but you certainly didn't fail. I mean, you made a Spruce Tips Porter that we all picked up on the Spruce Tips. And the score, you scored 38, which is a good score. And you had yeah, three judges much. that scored it exactly the same. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'd have given yeah. it a 37 and a half, personally, but. Yeah, uh, no half yeah. point round up. <laughs> at NHC. No, we can't. Up, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, host, host determination rules, but yeah, he rounds up the 30, 38, too. Yeah. 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 It's true. There you go. Uh, it's a good beer, Jeff. Thanks. Uh, well, yeah. thanks for sharing it with us. And uh, did you enter any beer into this competition this year? I did. It didn't make it here, though. Uh, okay. You entered yeah. the first round. I did. I uh, did. Yeah. Try harder. I know. <laughs> we'll find better judges, I think. Do you enter competitions, Brian? <laughs> I, I do. I entered you the did. first round as well. I didn't okay. actually make anything. Uh, the competition was fierce. My beer scored pretty well. I was happy with the scores I got. I thought they were fair. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I had some high 30s and didn't. Yeah, it didn't pass along the second round. So, what did you make? What did you enter? Uh, I had a, a, a traditional mead and um, 
a few a couple different sours, uh, just some of my weird project sours, and then some club project beers that I just wanted to enter just for the club. And I entered the you know the person who made the recipe is my co brewer with with me. And okay, you know, I um, think I judged your sour ah at Ghost yeah. Town in the first round, didn't I? You probably judged some Did of you my, get my, so it's my your weird sours. <laughs> yeah, I. I tell it like it is, man. As you should. Pull up the sheets, yeah. As you should. I do not pull punches. <laughs> no. no, I don't. Actually, I don't think you judged mine. I think it was other people. Other people. Other people. Those people. Those, yeah. Yeah. Those people that gave you a bad score. I won't blame you, John. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you, uh, for, not only for doing this show all the time, Brian and Brian, uh, but uh, Jeff uh, for making the beer and submitting it, John for hanging out and judging with us. Yeah. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Bell's Brewery and Bell's General Store for being on the program and our new partner in Dr. Homebrew. I'm kind of excited. That's uh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to get a kit, so it's I'm going to be, be on the really show fun. again. Oh, excellent. You're going to yeah. get one, too. Okay, good. I'm, I'm getting the same kit, kit and we're gonna, I'm going to kick his we're gonna have yes. the There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's going to be like 38, 39, yes. something that's going to be a, yeah. it'll be a close race. I got I'm better sure. water than he does. <laughs> uh, we're also doing another, uh, another live show tomorrow here. Just uh, look at the schedule. It's posted here at the Brewing Network, but we're going on at 12.30 tomorrow with another episode of Dr. Home brew on friday the 28th that's right uh we're broadcasting all week here uh from the floor of homebrew con thanks for hanging out with us and for for subscribing to this podcast tell your friends share it with your friends and we're going to be giving away some of these bell kits uh bells kits on our social media as well so uh not just for for those of you who are going to brew it and submit it but we're just going to be giving them away so if you're not already a fan of the brewing network pages go do that instagram twitter facebook and we'll try to get you some bells kits yourself. This has been Dr. Homebrew. Yes, Brian? Justin, yeah. have you taken care of our licensing for homebrew doctoring in the state of Rhode Island? And of we're course. in California. Uh, I, I don't want to be here. doctoring homebrew without a license here in Rhode Island. Are we okay here? Brian, I pay all my taxes. All right, as long I do, as I'm you, so legit. You all have no right, idea. As long as you're so legit, we're cool. <laughs> I'm too legit to quit. Oh. <laughs> I had to do that. I walked I? you right into that, didn't I'm I? I'm so fucking old to make that joke right now. <laughs> Thanks, Justin, for being here and helping hosting us and it's been a lot of fun so i'm having yeah. fun too it's really good to hang out with you guys thanks for listening to dr homebrew and we'll see you on the next episode